So the uncanny valley, we're going to be going through the basics of it, so the background information, uh, the hypothesis for my research, um, how we went through it for the methodology, the data that was collected, um, what the images were shown for it, um, the final discussion, and then conclusion, as well as the references and citations. So to begin with, the uncanny valley theory was created by Mauricio Mori, a Japanese professor in robotics in the 1970s. So his idea was that as robotics became more human lifelike as opposed to in the factories where there was arms moving things from one piece to another making things to the faces of robots that people were becoming a little more unnerved or creeped out by the realistic the realism of these things. So that's where the uncanny valley came from. Uncanny Valley is the line between realism and animation, or at least in this case it will be defined as that. So it's when does a character become too realistic that, or just not quite realistic enough that the viewer becomes unnerved or creeped out by it. Um, in this study, we are referring to animation as any non-living human slash creature, so you'll see cartoon characters and um, human characters from different types of styles. So for the hypothesis, uh, as the images become more, more realistic, it would, they would be considered to be creepier um, and that ideally the final results would show the uncanny valley at the highest rating being the creepiest image. So that would show where the valley was located. The goal of the research project was to find the uncanny valley in a group of images. So to see if, if you varied your images, if the uncanny valley could exist within them. So to set up this research, there was 18 images that were chosen that would be shown to the participant. They would then rate the images from 1 to 10, 1 being not creepy at all and 10 being very creepy. Um, to do this, we used a survey site, SurveyMonkey, to perform the research. So at the, we ended up with 58 participants who rated the 18 images, and the scale was from 1 to 10. So that's from not creepy at all to very creepy. So this is our graph of how the image is laid out. We have our image ratings on the side over here. So 1 would be the lowest rating, and 10 would be the most creepy. And on the bottom we have the image number, so referring to the number that each image was given. So here's a basic overview of the end ratings. We can see that image 1 had a 1.5 rating and how it went up and how it compares to the other images. Uh, this is what the images that were used, so they're thumbnails, small thumbnails, to give you a basic idea of the images and how they correspond with the rating. So next, we're going to go through each image. So these are in order of least creepy to the most creepy. Um, the image number, right here it says image 3, that's related to the image in the order it was placed. So this is the order that the images were gone through, but the order that I will be showing you is from least creepy to most creepy. So. We can see at the bottom that 49 people rated this image not creepy at all, and nobody rated it a 10 for very creepy. And then finally our average rating over here was a 1.23. So our next image was image 1 at a 1.55. We had 41 people think it wasn't creepy at all. And again, nobody thought it was very creepy. So our average was a 1.55. As we continue, image 14 had a 1.63 rating. 34 people thought it was not creepy at all, but now we can see that the uh, it was a little more dispersed at the 2, and so it's starting to move just a little bit. Our next image, image 4, um, is a 2.0 for, for our creepy scale. Again, our not creepy has gone down, and somebody did rate it at a 10, so the rating average went up. For our next image, it's image 18, the 2.14. Um, not that many people thought it was um, very creepy, but we did have 31 people, and then everywhere else in between. So now we're even up to a 7 for how creepy it could be. 
um, MH2 ended up being a 2.21. Um, again, if we look at the bottom, we can see how the people, the participants responded to this image. Um, image 7 at a 2.23. The images are not very different in terms of their end rating, but it is still rising, which is... Next we have image 17. Um, two people thought it was very creepy, so that's a higher number now, and 29 people thought it wasn't creepy at all, so we can look and see how the image was dispersed between that. Image 15 at a 2.45. Um, 21 people thought it wasn't creepy at all, but the ratings elsewhere was higher, even if it never hit the 10. Uh, MH9 at a 3, so now we're in the 3s. Um, not creepy at all is now under 20 for participants, and we can really see the 2 and the 3 building. MH13, uh, we got uh, 10, nobody at 9, but it's very spread apart. For the other ratings. Image 16 at a 3.13. Uh, 25 not creepy at all, but we can tell that it was teetered by this, the 7s, 8s, 9s, and 10s rating for people with an average of two people going for those as well. Then we have image 5 at a 3.5, 3.35. And again, it's really starting to go all the way across the board for this. Uh, image 6 at a 3.45. Uh, it's still down in the 1 to 3s, but it's being displaced by the higher ratings. Image 10 at a 3.54. Um, there's 14 for not creepy at all. And our 4s are getting pretty high up there, as well as our 2s. So that's what's causing this to be a higher. Image 11 at a 3.91. Um, Again, the images are really starting to get a creepier, and you can tell by the more heavy, higher ratings on these images. Uh, image 12 at a 4.8. So they're really across the board now, even more so, and getting pretty up there. And finally, our creepiest image at a 5.68. So not many people thought it was not creepy at all. It was pretty high with the threes and upward. So how does this then for the results? So the initial hypothesis was correct that the ratings would rise with the images and then lower again as it followed as the images followed the uncanny value. Um, the highest creepy level was a 5.68 on a scale of 10. Um, image 12 originally was unforeseen that it would have such a high rating so to go back and look at that, we, can, we have an image here. It was just surprising that it did end up to be that high. So how does this then apply to films, animation, games? Um, well, if you think about it, if you want to get uh, initial response about a character and making uh, as being a villain or maybe being a monster or a little more creepy, you can push that towards the realism side of the uncanny valley so see how close you can get to it so that their initial response would be that it was more creepy whereas for if you want somebody to connect with a cute character you might want to have a more cartoon style to your art so that they'll be like oh this is really cute so it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your character um, so again, it's how does this apply to design? It's your emotion response that you would like to obtain from the user and what is your focus? What is your hope to accomplish? Um, so if this research was done in the future, you might ask a different group of participants, um, ask people to explain their answer to better understand what is it that made them respond in such a way perhaps start um, with creepy images and work to non-creepy and back. So do it the opposite of what we did. We started with the non-creepy and went to the creepy. And then playing with emotions is a different, everybody's happy, all your characters are happy. Is it the character design? Um, are people still 
rating them they would if everybody was smiling or if they were all mad. Um, so the results show that where the uncanny valley is located within the images and that the line between realism and where the line between realism and cartoons become blurred. So again we can see that with our graph and how it started at a 1.55 and then eventually we climbed into the valley and then we came back out. So if we flip the graph over we can actually see where the uncanny valley is located because that is our highest um, rated image. Um, these are the references to other information concerning the uncanny valley. Thank you.